Hello, it is Friday, October 8th, 2021. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to my New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Friday puzzle today, so probably on the tricky side, probably not too wacky though. Hopefully we've got a nice, good, straightforward crossword puzzle to solve today. But before we do that, a couple things to mention. One, the Patreon campaign is, of course, going, as I've, as I've been mentioning, at patreon.com slash daily solve. And that's the way that if you enjoy the series, you can help directly support it and make it a sustainable effort on my part. So thank you so much to, his, to everybody who has done so. The link is in the description underneath each video. And uh, there are extra bonus videos. There should be two going up in the next day or so, two new exclusive videos for uh, Patreon supporters, as well as special access to the Discord server. And I wanted to mention that as well, because I, over the past couple days, I mentioned the Discord server in particular, which um, is broadly free to join anyway, regardless of whether you're a Patreon supporter, you just get additional access through the Patreon, but it is free to join for anybody. There's a link in the description field as well. And the reason I'm bringing it up yet again is because the first day I mentioned it twice because of these uh, fun new crosswords that new constructor Metanome released in the Discord server, uh, the link was bad. And so the next day, I think yesterday, I said, ah, I fixed the link. Turns out somehow, extraordinarily, I managed to correct the link on every single video except for yesterday's. So once again, when I said the link is fixed, please click the link, it was wrong again. And I fixed it much more quickly this time. But in case you uh, tried again and were stymied by a bad Discord chat server invite link, it is definitely fixed this time. I'm sorry about that. So if you would like to join the chat server to try those puzzles or just to uh, chat about crosswords or puzzles in general, it should work now. So, all right, great. Let's talk about some clues from yesterday's puzzle. There are several today. Regarding sob, which I think was listed as something like, was clued something to the effect of a, a one-time Scandinavian export or something. And I was a little bit confused about the one time. And it turns out, as Ocon points out, Saab Auto went back bankrupt in 2011 and ended, ended all production in 2014. Saab is an aerospace defense company making fighter jets and replacement aircraft parts for many European militaries still exists. So somehow I missed the news that Saab Auto no longer exists. I guess as a as a non-driver, I somehow uh, I, I'm out of the loop when it comes to this sort of thing at this point. Although I'm surprised that I somehow missed that. Okay, LFZW refers to a clue that I think I maybe never saw, or maybe saw. I think I did see it, but ended up filling it through crosses and never returned to. The clue was Moonscape feature, and the answer mare M A R E, which might seem odd because a mare is a is a horse, but. LVZW says, Mare refers to the lunar mare, which are the dark spots on the moon. They look somewhat like bodies of water, and that's where they got their name. Mare, mare, is Latin for sea. It is now thought that they are the remnants of lava-filled impact craters. So there we go. Uh, good, good bit of context for a clue that I completely ended up glossing over. And uh, Kathy Swope points out, with respect to Ratatat, which was a fill in the puzzle yesterday, which I said, oh, it seems like an imitation of an automatic weapon, but she says, it's actually any wrapping or tapping in rapid succession. The derivation is imitative, and the first known use was in the 1600s, clearly prior to the advent of automatic weapons. So there we go. Chris Mack succinctly informs me that the Ryder Cup is a golf competition between teams from Europe and the USA. I did not know that. I guessed it was a sailing thing and was completely wrong. And finally, this was, uh, I, I'm, I'm slightly shamed here by Jack Edelman, who says, I like harmless rattler as a clue for Maraca, but when you found it, were you making the hand gesture for a castanet, Chris? Yes, I was. <laughs> I heard Maraca and thought of castanets, the little ones you click, but Maracas are the usually wooden, uh, sort of hollow oblongs with sticks. Maracas are shakers that you shake with your hand. So, whoops. Very good catch. Good eye on Jack Edelman there. Okay, so let's get on to today's Friday 
crossword. This puzzle has been constructed by Jakob Jonas and is edited, as always, by Will Shorts. So, shall we get right onto it? It's a Friday. Could take a while. You never know. Let's get started. Okay. Epiphanies. This is quite long. I'm actually just curious. Is it the same length as Epiphanies? It is. <laughs> it is the same length as its own clue. An epiphany is a sort of, um, you know, it's a realization that's too long, a sort of aha moment. Wait. Oh, that does fit, actually. Aha moments fits. Let's check the crosses, because that would be quite a fortuitous first fill. Uh, if something is not straight, it is a skew with that A, that works. A bud. I don't... A homie? I don't know. That seems unlikely. A bud. Not sure. More than enough. Ample. It's more than enough. California County. That's home to Muir Woods. Um... Oh boy, I really should know this. Um, Marin County. There we go. Sorry. I wouldn't expect that to be common knowledge at all, but I did live in San Francisco for most of my life. So uh, that is nearby. Uh, I guess that wasn't self-evident, but Marin County is north of San Francisco, which is how I know that. Fox's Blank Choice Awards. Oh, well, it's probably not the Wren Choice Awards. Fox doesn't probably have a bird-oriented choice award. So maybe this isn't a skew. But these look, these definitely look right. Marin County, I'm sure, is right. And Ample seems right. So Aha Moments probably is correct. I think Teen Choice Awards rings a bell. Is that, I have no idea if it's Fox that does that. So not straight. What is this? A tilt. There we go. Okay. But just as valid as a skew. I think they're, they're both perfectly plausible fills here. Classic O'Keefe subject, Georgia O'Keefe. Uh, lilies, looks plausible. And like hitting a million dollar jackpot. Impressive, is it? I mean, it's sort of random, isn't it? I mean, it's certainly fortuitous. Uh, I mean, I guess it's impressive in the sense that it would impress upon you. It's a momentous event. It would be incredibly memorable. So I suppose in that sense, it is impressive in the, in the, I guess, the truest sense of the word. Oh, so Bud is homie. What do you know? Look at that. Great, Great Plains Tribe. I don't know. What is this? Classic Warhol subject. Oh, tomato soup cans, right? He, uh, Andy Warhol illustrated the Campbell's soup. Tomato soup. Yeah, tomato soup. Okay. So OT, I actually don't think I know, I don't think I'm very familiar with this tribe, to be honest. And then here we have Pax. Now this is this all looks wrong. Okay, so this maybe this isn't impressive. I was I was skeptical of the fill, and then I convinced myself of it. But maybe it's wrong. Oto is actually a tribe with which I am familiar with, with which I am familiar, I should say. So im like hitting him. Packs could be mobs of people. Oh, improbable. Ah, well, that is certainly the case. Hitting a million dollar jackpot is indeed improbable. Okay, I got a little ahead of myself there. And then I started started picking apart the answer that I myself incorrectly filled. So there you go, a little, little bit of hubris today. Spanish pronoun, Asa, that looks right. Head in slang, knob. Um, knob can be slang for noble, wonder if that's what that means. Is knob short for... Does knob also get mean toilet or something? Head? I don't know. I, don't, I think probably knob for noble. New Orleans University and iota. An iota, not one iota, not one spec. It's often useful, I find, with definitional clues, synonyms like this, which this probably is. Well, you know, most clues are a definition or synonym. Uh, it's often useful to sort of Try and use it in a sentence yourself to kind of imagine some other words that might fit. It doesn't always work. I mean, if you if you can't bring the word to mind, it just won't work. Obviously, if this always worked, crosswords would be very easy. But but um, I find it can be helpful. Uh, Tulane University sounds familiar to me. 
I wouldn't have, to be totally honest, I wouldn't have known it was in New Orleans, but, uh, but I bet it is. So to get into something, to, I mean, this could be get into as a hobby, or it could be get into as to wear, or act on to get into, I'm not really seeing it. Pub container could be a tankard of beer, ale. Let's look at, um, I think I mentioned yesterday, it's always, this is a pretty obvious, but you know, the first letter of a word is generally the most helpful letter. So kind of skipping straight to these crosses because I have the first letters. A moderate pace could be a trot, I suppose, as in the case of a horse. A blank tear, a sports injury, an ACL tear at the tendon, right? And then the F in F equals MA, that would be force. Force equals uh, mass times acceleration, I suppose. And a Norse war god, Odin, I, I think. Is Odin the god of war? I don't even know. But uh, it fits. There might be a different one. We'll have to see. Musician on the cover of Rolling Stone, often. Uh, well, based on that Odin, it could be an idol. Well, based on the Odin and the other crosses. Some, maybe a teen idol, maybe. I don't know. Uh, let's check this. Place to roast marshmallows. It was a fire pit. Roast marshmallows over an open fire. And we should probably at least check out the crosses up here. I, I sort of skipped over them uh, to focus on the crosses in the middle of the grid. Spoke to a judge, say. Could be pled, maybe, as in made a plea, issued your plea to the judge. Blank Equis Dos Equis, which is a, a Mexican beer brand, I believe. And then here, ballpark figures. Could be estimates. I mean, it could plausibly also be ETAs, estimated times of arrival, or ETDs, estimated times of departure. But I think those are intended to be quite accurate, even though they're called estimated. So maybe, so even though they're definitionally estimates, I don't know that you'd consider them ballpark figures, which has a rougher connotation. So probably estimates. Lead into stat. I'm not really sure. Lead into stat. Groups receiving Our Children magazine. You know what? Maybe this is ETAs. After all of that. Because this could be PTAs, Parent Teacher Associations. I've never heard of Our Children magazine, but it sounds like the sort of thing that a parent teacher association might receive. And PTAs comes up in the crossword occasionally. So that would make that would make this ETAs, and then that would change the prefix here to stat. Autostat. I don't really know what that is, but it sounds like it could be something that exists. Autostat. Time to eat. No, it's not. Time to eat looks like let's maybe let's Dive in, let's dine, let's, what is this? Maybe it's not let's. Oh, get into though is access. What? Homemade headwear for kids, paper. Oh, aerostat, oh. Ballpark, oh, this. Wow, after all of that, after three possible different fills, it's something completely unrelated. It's ballpark figures. This must be sports related. E I thought eras originally, and I was thinking, what a rough time period. But no, I sort of suspect this is an initialism, E-R-A's. And I have no idea what it stands for, but I just have to assume it's correct. Because aerostat looks right, even though I couldn't tell you what it is. And let's looks right. So I think this is all correct even though it's a bit hazy for me around the ERAs and the aerostat. Okay, homemade headwear for kids could be paper hats. The most straightforward possible answer to that clue. Like many fancy parties, they might be catered. Food might be catered. So this could be object, a noun, or object, a verb. I'm not sure which, so let's keep going. Martial arts actor Steven, Steven Seagal. You know, I don't even know that I've seen a Steven Seagal movie, but I definitely know of his existence. 
if one is a bit too articulate, perhaps, you might be considered a glib, I suppose. If you are, um, I don't know, what is that? Sort of talking over people or talking around them in a way, I suppose, is what is what that connotes. Object, oh, a thing, I suppose. Once again, the most straightforward possible fill for the clue object would be a thing. Prefix with technology could be nanotechnology. And one who objects to screw caps, say. Hmm. Don't really know, but here we have time to eat is let's dig in. That's pretty clear now. So this is some kind of snob, someone who objects to something. Makes sense that they would be a snob of some sort. And the say could indicate there's something a little bit cute going on. This looks like martini, doesn't it? What is what is the clue? Some like it dirty. Yes, a dirty martini. A martini with a bit of olive brine in it. I do enjoy a slightly dirty martini. Okay, if one is all there, one is sane. And bell peppers on the Scoville scale are mild. The Scoville scale is a relative scale of heat in peppers. The, the kind of uh, heat that makes your mouth feel on fire and derives from cap, uh, capsaicin, a compound that makes peppers uh, hot. Okay, and bell peppers are mild, a version of that. One who objects to screw caps. Oh, a wine snob, maybe, because I know very little about wine. I sort of wish I knew more about wine, but it's something I feel I'm just entirely uneducated around that entire world. But uh, screw caps, I think, are often seen to be... <clears throat> A sign of a cheaper wine than a than a corked bottle. Ah, excuse me. All right. If something was earned, you could say it was won, hard won, hard earned. And a cry heard at a shoe auction, <laughs> sold. Very clever. That's that's pretty goofy, but sort of I would say dad joke territory there. We're conflating the sole of a shoe with the action of selling at a, uh, at a sh at an auction. Okay. A classic gag gift at a bachelorette party. Um, this will probably be obvious with some crosses. So let's move on per diem EG. So per diem is per day, but it's most often, I think used as a payment to, to indicate a essentially a, a reimbursement that you that you get to cover daily expenses. So does that help? Um, not really. <laughs> Maybe it does for you, but I'm not seeing it right now. Okay, shocked could be a gasp. If you're a gasp, you're you're sort of physically shocked. Model and TV personality Chrissy, who wrote the cookbook series Cravings. Um. I'm sure that this is, I'm sure this person has come up in crosswords before. I definitely remember Chrissy, but I can't quite bring her surname to mind. Eponym for an Italian ice chain. You know, I don't know what this is, but I wouldn't be surprised if it were Asta, because that's, an, that's a place in Italy that seems to be eponymous for a number of things. Uh, I'm not confident about that, but it's just a guess. Let's check the crosses. Musician on the cover of Rolling Stone often. I don't know. I think that was nonsense. I'm going to get rid of it. Obtain a sum via special relativity. Ah, so this seems like it would be referring to Einstein's special theory of relativity. But uh, in fact, it's just sort of a bit of wordplay. And it's referring to uh, inheriting money from a relative... You know, special relativity. It's uh, just a bit of a little joke there. So what is this? I don't know. And 25 across on earth in brief. So force on earth, one G maybe, which indicates G's are, again, a sort of relative measure of gravity. And the thing they're relative to is gravity on earth. So one G is you know, sitting on the ground on Earth, I suppose. Gravitational force. Uh, and then musician on the cover of Rolling Stone, often. 
Boy, I don't know. I mean, is there any way this could be someone's name and it's just a coincidence that it's Idol? You know, I mean, obviously not Billy Idol. It doesn't fit. I don't think so. I think it probably is some sort of Idol, and I'm just blind to it at the moment. A superfood commonly used as a smoothie. Oops. Excuse me. Wow, that came on quickly. Okay, a superfood commonly used as a smoothie bowl topping. I think this is chia seeds, maybe. That looks right. Oh, rock idol. There we go. I don't know why that took me so long. I kept thinking pop idol, and I I guess I don't think of the phrase rock idol as being as commonly used as pop idol, but should have should have gotten there. Okay, eponym for an Italian ice chain. And then here we have frat party stunts. Well, with that K in the E, a frat party, a fraternity party at a university in the United States would be a keg something. Keg stands, maybe? Yeah, there we go. That fits. Oops, oops, oops. And this Chrissy Teigen, I think, with all these crosses, looks right. And an eponym for an Italian ice chain, Rita, I guess. I don't know. I've never heard of it. But uh, So that's a tough one. I mean, that's tough. That's two names as proper nouns. And Rita is a name, but it would be easy to imagine that if it's... I, I don't know if the Italian means... I mean, Italian ice is a commonly sold outdoor snack, but it doesn't, I mean, there's, there's no reason the firm that sells this would need to be Italian. So you wouldn't necessarily, I don't know, who knows, but whatever, let's, let's keep going. The, the, sorry, the only point I was making there was one might assume that the name has to be Italian and therefore not, uh, you know, th th wonder if maybe it's going to be something farther afield. Uh, so it could make this a tricky cross. Let me know if you found that tricky at all. Um, Chrissy Teigen is probably common knowledge for a lot of people, I would bet, given that she's come up in the, I think this, she has come up in the puzzle a few times and I hope next time I just remember it. Okay. Per diem. Oh, a stipend. Of course. Yes, exactly what I described. And then I couldn't get there. And then here we have Negro League's legend, Satchel. Oh, Satchel Page. Um, Baseball, baseball player. And reason for a colonial party. Oh, uh, the tea party in colonial America, the tea tax. And then a classic gag gift at a bachelorette party. Oh, a sex toy, I suppose. So over here, we have a timely query. When? Query literally about time. Oh, like the ancestry of Chrissy Teigen. Uh, Thai. She must be Thai, I suppose. I can't see what else would fit that cross. And then insult slangily would be diss, to diss somebody, I think. And a nuclear bomb for EG, nuclear bomb for instance, for short, a WMD, a weapon of mass destruction. And then here we have anti-DWI organizations. So DWI driving while intoxicated. And that organization, I believe, is mad mothers against drunk driving. So that all fits. So let's check these long answers here. I'm back. Maybe it's me again? Yeah, there we go. That fits. To be in direct competition, I don't know, go up against? No, it doesn't really fit anyway, because uh, that would have to be be in direct competition with, as opposed to just to be in direct competition. Epiphanies? Oh. Oh. There's two epiphanies. Wow, I really was fortunate that I got that one with aha moments because there's there's a completely separate epiphanies that must be eye openers with precisely the same number of of letters. All right, well, <laughs> so that's almost like I mean it's not a theme I guess because it's Friday, uh, and as we all know, there's no theme on a Friday crossword puzzle nor on Saturdays, but. Um, is there anything else that relates to eye-openers in this puzzle? I don't really remember anything, so I guess it's just a, it's just a, it's just a little fun way for the constructor, Jakob Jonas, to have fit in two fairly long answers, both, uh, both sort of, um, you know, colloquial phrases, I would say, eye-openers and aha moments. Uh, wow, boy, I really lucked out there. I wonder how long it would have taken me if I had somehow landed on eye openers, which I don't think I would have, because I sort of feel as though aha moments is a more direct 
interpretation of, in, of epiphany than eye opener. I mean, not, I don't think eye openers is incorrect for the fill or anything, but I think it was unlikely I would have gotten to eye opener first because I almost think of an eye opener as something that in some cases can be an external stimulus that you see something and it causes you to open your eyes. Whereas I think of an epiphany or an aha moment as being something more internal. You come to a, an internal realization and then that is, you know, and it could, you could, you could describe that as an eye opener as well. So it's I, not, in, not incorrect at all, but I'm fortunate, but not quite surprised that I hit on aha moments before eye openers. Anyway, sorry, I just was, that was a bit of a surprise. And in a way it was sort of a little epiphany. <laughs> so that was fun. That was a fun meta moment in this crossword. Okay. A business card abbreviation. Uh, oh, sweet. Maybe businesses are often in addition to the street address, they often have a sweet number. So I wonder if that's what that's getting at. Maybe Jersey. This might, I, I don't know. I feel like that's maybe forced and then Jersey greeting. Oh, a Jersey dairy cow. Right. Okay, so neither Jersey, the crown dependency, nor New Jersey, the state, but rather Jersey dairy cows, which, you know, may well come from Jersey, actually, the crown dependency for all I know. Okay, challenger blank, lowest known point in the Earth's oceans. Deep, maybe? I mean, that would be the... That's deep, low, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, oops, that was certainly not a P, that would be an E. Oh, you're right, go toe to toe. And then that that does fit that does fit the part of speech here because you need to say go toe to toe with similarly to be in direct competition with so the, these match essentially is what I'm saying whereas whatever I had before didn't didn't match up okay a bud is a mate oh and we had bud here so we had bud crossing an epiphany up at the top is there anything else that's doing that is I don't think so. Yeah, just just another little echo. That's yeah, yeah. That's it. Okay, just another little echo there. Here we have Mendeleev who created the periodic table. That's Dmitri Mendeleev. And I mean, I suppose even if you didn't know that the DM, if you were well, if you were confident in deep and mate to be told, which to be totally honest, I maybe wouldn't have been confident in deep myself because I I don't think I'm familiar with this phrase challenger deep. So I might have, if I didn't actually already know the name Dmitry Mendeleev, I might have then become less confident in this film. But Dmitry is a name, so maybe I, maybe I would have gotten there. I don't really know. Portmanteau for a certain hybrid feline. Tigon? What would that be? A tiger and a lion? Maybe. Uh, Washington, but not Jefferson. So there is a U.S. state named Washington. That's the state that contains the city of Seattle. Uh, there is no Jefferson state. And pre so you, you could look at this and think, if you recognized Washington and Jefferson as presidents, you might think, what would describe George Washington, but not Thomas Jefferson? But uh, it's, it's a little more straightforward than that. Previous is prior, it's straightforward, and right triangle ratios are signs, I suppose, a trigonometric function, uh, <laughs> whose explanation I no longer recall. And shortening used in many recipes. So here's another light bit of misdirection. Shortening, you might assume, would be, uh, you know, butter or uh, synthetic, or, or, or not synthetic, but, uh, you know, vegetable shortening or something like that. Uh, but in fact, it means an abbreviated bit in a recipe, TSPS for teaspoons. And that, that does confirm Tigon. So there we go. All right. And that was the Friday puzzle. I was utterly gobsmacked by this epiphanies moment. In part, I think, because, and I, I'm, it's, it's probably, you know, I, you never know, I, so in, in my uh, in my other life, not doing this series, I'm a game designer, a video game designer, and one of the things that is so uh, well, one of the things I guess that's challenging about that job 
is how impossible it is to imagine all of the ways people will interact with the thing that you've made. Because in a a game system where the person using it has a high degree of freedom to interact with it however they like, as compared to, say, a film or something, which in no way am I suggesting that it's game design is more difficult than filmmaking or anything. It's just one of the unique difficulties in uh, game design is not that things can be just interpreted differently. It's that they can actually be used differently in a literal sense. And so people will will uh, go through the thing in different ways. And contending with that is can can be quite challenging. And I wonder, as a crossword constructor, if you had and I and I, I should try I should try constructing a crossword. I never have done so, but it was fun seeing uh, Metanome over in the Discord server create his first crosswords as a constructor. That that was that was fun to see. It makes me think I should try it out as well. But anyway, the point I was uh, I'm sort of very indirectly uh, trying to arrive at is that I wonder if a crossword constructors have a sort of intended flow. You know, I wonder if there was a part of Jakob Jonas in constructing this who's, who hopes that the solver would have a minor epiphany early in the puzzle, land on aha moments, and then after solving the whole, you know, maybe not solving the whole puzzle, but after traversing this entire grid all the way from top to bottom, have a sort of secondary epiphany that is entirely contingent on having had the first one here. Uh, and in my case, I think I had the best possible version of that, which was landing on this immediately or almost immediately, and then essentially doing the entire puzzle before even seeing this clue so that I could have the secondary epiphany. And the reason I sort of wonder this is because there's absolutely no way you could possibly guarantee as a crossword constructor that that would happen. And that's something I relate to as a game designer because for all you know, someone could have a convention. They just start solving the puzzle vertically. I think I've done that before. I mean, when I solve puzzles, you know, privately, not for the not for the channel, sometimes I'll just set myself arbitrary goals just to just to try different things, and I'll just say I'm only going to solve the acrosses, and I'm not going to look at any downs for the entire puzzle. It's just what I'm doing today, just kind of for fun, for no particular reason. And there there are so many ways in which the solving path through this puzzle could not match up with the little sort of one-two punch epiphanies that I had. And and I wonder to what extent the constructor hopes that will happen and tries to nudge the solver into that direction. And then, but you know, at the end of the day, you have to relinquish control of that and let the person solve it however they're going to solve it and just hope that the puzzle is satisfying regardless. So anyway, just bit of idle reflection on my part. No real conclusions other than that it worked for me this time and I really enjoyed it. So I hope you did as well. And I hope you enjoy this series. If so, or maybe this is your first time, you should subscribe and then you'll then you'll really get to determine if you enjoy it or not. But I certainly hope you do. If you subscribe to the channel, you'll be notified when these videos go up every day. Although I don't think you need to be explicitly, notif- explicitly notified. I think you can choose to simply have it show up in your subscriber, subscribe section of YouTube for easy access whenever you would like to watch a person on the internet solve a crossword. And um, if you want to directly support this channel and this series, please do check out the Patreon campaign. As I said, there are a number of benefits, including bonus solves, two of those going up in the next day or so. There are... um, There's exclusive uh, mug, which I will be designing over the coming weeks with the input of people in the tiers who have access to that mug. I'll be doing some polls to let people choose what sort of the details of the design, and then they will eventually get it. And uh, you get special access to the Discord server, although anyone can join it for free if if you'd like in general. And some people are thanked at the end of these videos. And today, I would like to extend a warm thank you to Shantanu, Bhatia, and, as always, the excellent Hood Monster. So thank you so much, Shantanu and Hood Monster, for your very, very generous support. I really do appreciate it, and it helps this series continue. And thank you, of course, to everybody else who has backed the Patreon campaign, and thank you so much to you 
for watching. Thank you. I hope you come back and do the same thing tomorrow for the Saturday puzzle. The tr Well, I was going to say the trickiest, but I think what I'll say instead is the toughest. The toughest puzzle of the week, often. Not always, the, not always particularly tricky, per se, but tough. So do join me then. But until that point, have an excellent remainder of your Friday. Take care.